Hi, I'm Fox. I'm Rankable. And I'm Couch Guy. You're watching the Two Smart Guys show, where every week we bring you the latest in gadget hacking and modding and getting the most out of it. Hey, guess what? I think you finally found a use for that toy of yours. <laughs> kind of, maybe. The, some may say overpriced piece of hardware that... <laughs> Well, overpriced for you because you paid retail at the yeah. beginning. Yeah. <laughs> but I got a bunch of free games later. I'm an ambassador. Yeah. <laughs> what does that mean you're, you're an amb amb ambassador of what? I'm an ambassador Thank of uh, being an, an early adopter for this toy, <laughs> apparently. A.K.A. Thank you for beta testing in the free market our toy that barely works. Hey, I'm doing it with my car, and it was forty thousand well, dollars. It, it, it works. It does its job. It, it does what it needs to do, but the need eh, for it, it's good. the desire for he it, enjoys it. That's all that matters. Okay, but it's, it's enjoyable. We can for share him. the need, and we can share the joy of that 3ds now with hey, somebody else. Why don't we tell people yes. what we're doing? I think we should tell people what we're doing. 3D. So now with the newest firmware update, you can shoot 3D video on the 3ds. But all you can do is watch it in 3D on the 3DS. We're going to show you how to get it off of there so that you can do things like upload it to YouTube, put it in your favorite video editor, and... Share it with your friends. Yeah, make, make something of it. And make 3D magic. <laughs> so here's a quick tutorial on... Well, less than quick, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's actually not that complicated. All right, so first of all, you need to shoot some 3D video. So go ahead and take out your Nintendo 3DS, go to the camera section, and switch to video, and do some recording. When that's done, uh, go over to your PC and copy over the footage. So you should have a card that looks like this, and then DCIM, and the file format is AVI. So all you got to do is we'll go ahead and make a little folder here to copy of all of our videos into. There. Now if you play the video. Uh, certain players, such as VLC. No, white balance is way off on this camera. <laughs> All right, so do you like being? It shows uh, two videos, the two video streams. So it's an AVI container with two video streams embedded. So we need to extract those two video streams in order to do any kind of editing with them because that format's kind of weird and nothing currently edits it. So download this program, Motion Graph Studio. Go ahead and run that. and then open up the video file and down here where it says file type you want to make sure it says all files go to open and this is kinda of like a default um, layout here we don't need any of this stuff over here so we just highlight it all and delete it but what we do need is to add a filter for AVI MUX, two of those, one, two. And we'll put those over here. Now stream one of the video is gonna go to this first AVI MUX. And then stream two of the video is also gonna go over to the AVI MUX because that's your audio and your video. And then stream three is gonna go over to this AVI MUX. Well, I guess stream zero is audio, stream one is the video two, and stream two is the second I. Okay, so after we have our AVI muxes set up, we need to tell them where to write to. So we'll go over here to insert a file writer, the left eye. So we'll browse and we'll do left.avi, and we'll also do the same thing for our right AVI. So our left, we'll go and connect for the DMUX out and the AVI mux for the right. Now the left's going to carry the audio and the right's not going to have any audio. So now that's all set up, we just go ahead and hit play, and it'll automatically make the file. So now we have a left and a right file that we can open up in the editor of our choice. No, white balance. So that's the basics so far of doing the 3D video. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to use Final Cut X on a Mac to do 3D video. Um, Sony Vegas on the PC also does it as well as there's different plugins um, that work with Adobe Premiere and if you really want to you can just use uh, AV Sith 
and just run a little script that I'm gonna include in the show notes to automatically convert these two files into a side-by-side. -side. And that's how we ultimately wanna get this video is so that there's just one video file with the left and right eye side-by-side -side so we can upload it to YouTube or we can play it on current model 3D TVs and it'll automatically turn it in whatever format you wanna see it in. All right, so the very first thing that we're gonna do is create a new project. So we're gonna import the files that we got I'm going to create a new event for 3DS footage. If you are unable to import it, you may need to transcode it with a program that can take the AVI and make it into something a little bit more friendly for your, for your particular editor. So in my case, um, I'm just going to use Compressor to do this. And I'm going to change them from AVIs into ProRes, which is kind of overkill for these little uh, low-definition videos. but you know, whatever. <laughs> so we're going to select our files for both the left and the right eye. So we'll do our left eye and our right eye. We'll throw them into ProRes. So it says that they're 480 by 240 frame rate, 20 frames per second. It's not fantastic, but at least it's something. And you can see that the audio here is in the left eye. Uh, it's going to go into the source folder where I got them from, so we'll just hit submit and it'll go ahead and convert these. It'll take just a second and it'll transcode these over MOVs to work with inside of Final Cut. Now if you're using Adobe, they've also got a program that can transcode them and you might not even need to, but Final Cut's a little bit more picky. Uh, this will also work with Final Cut 7. If you do this, if you transcode them. Alright, so now we've got our MOVs that we can work with. We'll go ahead and import those. We don't need to create optimized media because it already is now. That is ProRes. And here's our left eye and our right eye. So with Final Cut X, we need to synchronize these. So we'll just highlight them both, right click, and we will go to synchronize clips. And this will create a little sub clip, a little nested clip right here. And the cool thing is with this is we can go into it and we can tell Final Cut which eye is which. For this, you need to use a special plugin. There's a free version that does a watermark, but uh, it's 100 bucks if you want to buy the full light version. And then there's like a pro version that's quite a bit more. I'm not exactly sure how much. I think it's like 1000 bucks. Anyways, inside of your effects folder, I'm using a plugin called Stereo 3D. Toolbox LE. I'll have this in the show notes. Install this before you get to this point. Then you just mark which eye is which. So we've got our left eye here, so we'll drag that over here for our left eye. Then we've got our right eye up here to our right eye. And those are set. Now we've got a side by side. So by default, I mean, we could export this right now and upload it to YouTube. But if we want to do editing, we can go back to our project. We can throw it on the timeline. And I'm going to tell it that we want to go ahead and do 1080p because it's going to be squishing it, uh, anamorphic. So we lose a lot of resolution, about half for each eye. And by default, this looks pretty good. We could just go ahead and edit this and export that. But if you want more options, this um, 3D or the stereo 3D toolbox effect, you can throw that on this nested clip here. And this is pretty neat. So right here, you've got uh, a lot of options to work with for video in the stereo 3D toolbox LE. Right now, uh, input is side by side. That's how we had it set up for the videos. Our 3D output mode is anaglyph outline mode. So you can wear little uh, red and blue glasses to work with this. And you can set the convergence of the two cameras so that they line up. And you can kind of set where the middle ground is. So like right there is going to be, you know, center. And if it's over this way more, then, you know, it's the image is going to be sticking out towards you or away from you, depending on on how you have it lined up. So you can kind of set your, your middle 
So we can have uh, Colton here be in the middle and then the background look like it's deeper into the picture and then the little bubble gum stick out more. And if you, you're you using two cameras instead of a 3DS, these will help you kind of line them up after the fact if they weren't perfect when you originally shot the footage. Same thing with rotation, zoom, if the camera is a little bit farther back or not zoomed in as much as the other camera. And then auto scale kind of fits it all full frame, so that's always good to use. Um, the other modes up here for output are side by side, which we're ultimately going to want to use to get this out to YouTube. Um, above and below, just another mode that you can also use in YouTube or TVs. It's kind of your own personal preference. Line by line interlaced, that's kind of how uh, the newer passive TVs work. I don't know how that format is, personally. Um, there's checkerboard, anaglyph, uh, oh, 50 is just superimposed. So it's kind of like so you can see both images. Uh, difference. Anaglyph color is where you just use the 3D glasses, the red and blue glasses, so you can actually get a real-time feedback of what the 3D looks like. So that's kind of handy to edit in. And then black and white anaglyph, you can really get a good sense of the depth while you're working on the photo. Stereoscope. Um, it's interesting, there's some companies that are making these for like iPads and iPhones and stuff where you just put a little viewer and you look through it, and then you get 3D, which actually is a really good 3D because you don't have to worry about any kind of issues. You get an individual image for each eye. And then 2D bypass just gives you a regular 2D image if you just want to edit that full screen, and then when you're done with it, switch it to side by side. Uh, once you chop these up and you make multiple clips, you can do your editing. You can uh, set one of them as a global, and then the other ones is use global. That way any adjustments you make will be changed to all the clips. Once you've got this all set up, you can just flat out uh, share it to YouTube, which is pretty cool. So just go ahead and fill out all this information, upload it to YouTube, go to your YouTube account, browse over to your new video, click on edit info, no, why that? and go to 3D video. This is already a 3D video, side by side. <laughs> no. White balance is way off on this. And camera. automatically, it'll be in 3D. You can save it. And viewers can then choose how they want to view it. If they've got the red and cyan glasses, the you know blue and red glasses, you can do that. Turn off 3D so it's not in 3D. Or um, this dubious it looks really good to me. Uh, full color... It, the 3D doesn't work as well, I don't think. In grayscale, 3D works great, but it's black and white. Uh, personally, I don't mind <laughs> some of the other options that they have. If you've got the other glasses, they, they usually work a little bit better. The the green magenta that comes with like Coraline or Ice Age. Um, I've never really seen the blue-yellow. Uh, inter interleaved might work with certain types of 3D displays. Uh, no glasses is cross-eyed and I think that one works the best personally all you do is just cross your eyes until the dots line up and then you'll see three images just focus on the middle one and it'll be in perfect 3D full color pretty cool stuff um, fun way to you know export 3D to YouTube and then the viewer can choose how they want to they can watch it in regular 2D or they can add watch it in anaglyph however they want pretty cool stuff uh, try it out yourself have fun all right, so that's how you, you do it. That's how you convert everything out onto the 3DS into your computer. You know, it's, 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 it takes a while, but I figure, you know, if, if you really want to do 3D, there's some pain involved in that, so it's worth it, right? Yeah, and the nice thing is, is you know, after you get, get it out of the AVI format that it's in into two separate AVIs, then you can run it through any program and convert those to any format that you choose. And uh, like the plugin that I showed in the tutorial for Final Cut X, um, it's also available for After Effects, Premiere. You can choose how to out, out, output it side by side for YouTube, or you can do um, anaglyph if you want to use just these glasses and just put the video out normally. Um, there's like seven or eight different ways to output it. <laughs> wow. So and, you know, the nice thing is once it goes to YouTube, even though it's a lower resolution, we're looking at something you could put on your TV at home and watch it with a pair of anaglyph glasses. Yeah, so the really cool thing about YouTube and 3D 
is that they let you upload the side by side and then the viewer picks how they want to watch it. So they can watch it with anaglyph or they can watch it with cross eyes so you don't need any glasses or, you know, wow. um, side by side so your TV can do it and convert it into, you know, either passive or active. Uh, somebody for Boxy or wants to write a plugin, make a plugin that'll play YouTube 3D videos. It just makes sense. <laughs> Why wouldn't you do that? It, it, it seems like it wouldn't be that, that hard. Many 3D videos on YouTube. Well, like Boxy can already do 3D video, and there's a, there are a lot of 3D videos on YouTube. Okay, I stand corrected. And this is a 3D <laughs> video on YouTube. If you see the little box in the corner, oh, click on it. Oh God! And it's in 3D, and the background behind me is in 3D. <laughs> I'm in 3D. Thanks. I'm gonna have to block that out in 3D. <laughs> 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 uh, but you don't have to watch it in 3D. 3D. And by default, it's not in 3D until you click the little 3D button. And one of the interesting things is, if you don't want to go through all this hassle, you can automatically convert your videos to 3D on YouTube now. They've got a you know motion estimation compensation fake 3D post. Oh, thing. God, I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> have you tried using motion that before? Or How well does it work? It it works with motion, so like you know, if you're moving, it can it can actually kind of take 3D data out of that. But if you're like holding still, it doesn't really work at all. So talking heads, not so much. Imagine no. But like if That's you maybe have some, back and forth a lot. Yeah. So if you if you're like moving a camera, <laughs> like you know, physically dollying or like you know, sliding, it can interpolate. It's, it's in all 3D. interpolation. That's all it's doing. It's it's gonna suck no matter what happens. Yeah, it's, if it's not true 3D, it's probably not worth it. No. But the 3DS is yeah. true 3D. Yeah. Correct. So the camera, the camera has two cameras. It counts. It's got two cameras. They're like low res, lower than VGA. <laughs> <laughs> but they're there. Yeah. Well, the, the Wikipedia said they were 640 but it's 3D. by 40. It just it may counts. be the the format that they're using. Yeah, the format that it records into is only 20 frames per second, and <laughs> it's um. You know, it's a little bit more, yeah. <laughs> you know, not great. Eight millimeter film, man. Eight millimeter film. Um, but at, you know, by the time you get to watch things on the internet, it's fifteen frames per second half the time anyway. So I don't know. I mean, a lot of YouTube stuff, YouTube, Vimeo, all that stuff. They're doing like full thirty frames a second, like pretty high res, HD, pretty high bit rate stuff. It's looking good. Well, the good the good news is if. If anything that we can use for consumer electronics comes out that will make 3D, you will give a tutorial about it because, <laughs> heaven forbid, you miss out on any 3D options. <laughs> Surprised you haven't picked up a 3D handy cam yet that they're selling. Oh, I almost did today. The bloggies on sale for like 180 bucks. And I was almost ready to buy a second. Um, See, there Go you go. You brought in the addiction. I almost got a second GoPro. That way I could get the 3D kit for that. Oh, that's right. There was a 3D GoPro, isn't there? But now they have a GoPro 2. And <laughs> I'd rather get that Which one. Is much better. <laughs> because um, it can do streaming. Uh, they're going to have what? an app for it. So you can stream from the GoPro live, like to Justin TV and stuff. They're going to have a pack that goes on the back that goes over Wi-Fi. Oh, so it's like just a pluggable module. Yeah. Wow. So, so it'll, That'll kill your battery really fast. Yeah, so you do like Wi-Fi, and then you turn on the Wi-Fi hotspot, or you have one on you, and bam, you broadcast from CES or whatever through the bloggy strapped to your forehead, or the GoPro strapped to your forehead. I want to see the I want to see the the bloggy strapped to somebody's crotch. <laughs> um, Everybody gets a headshot. Well, I, I, I want to see I've the got crotch. that video. I've got that video. Yeah, you just got go that ahead video? and go to the, you know, just go ahead all and go right. to my you know my Vimeo site. That's already there. Oh no. <laughs> Just different, just different perspectives. Is On that note, the show is over. <laughs> Thank you for watching. We're, we're doing live craziness and shows. And scene. Every Wednesday night at 8.30 Mountain Time now, so you don't have to stay up as we late. We have changed. We changed it. <laughs> so let everybody know it's all different. And speaking of CES, I'm going down again to CES, so we'll be posting videos from that. And he'll probably be going by himself because I don't think Couch Guy or I can get the time off to actually go. Oh, you just need to take like a day yeah. or two off to go down for the press events. That's all. <laughs> like, just a day or two plus yeah. a day or two of travel time. No, no, no. Plus... You, can, you can fly right out of Denver or Salt Lake. Just, it's on Sunday's the first day. 
And then, so if you at least make Sunday and just fly back on Monday, then, you know, we got to take Monday off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Think about it. I'll, 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 I'll check with the people. Check with the I'll people. I'll Bribe them. Work on Saturday. I'll be like, you guys want someone to go to CES, right? <laughs> right. 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 There's Any, no real work reason to go. New, you know. new, possibly a new Xbox going to be announced there? Rumor? That's what they're saying. <laughs> Never Console know. scenes have been kind of flatlined lately. You know, usually they announce that stuff at E3, but CES is much bigger, so the rumor is That's they're going to announce it at CES. They're, you know what they're going to Xbox with Kinect announce? built in. They're going to announce the fact that a new Xbox is built on their new Windows 8 phone. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, exactly. It's going to be like, play Xbox anywhere, anytime. Oh, by the way, Xbox Live just went up to 80 bucks a month. <laughs> uh, see you guys next week. TwoSmartGuys.com. Bye. Bye. All right. Say bye, everybody. Thanks for watching the show. Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching the show. <laughs>